It was one of those windy nights, the kind when your cigarette is blown out every 30 seconds, so you end up just staying in bed. The keys had fallen on my desk when I was in bad need of money, so I welcomed it. The Wong family contacted me a few days ago regarding a rather strange case. It is said that in the Chinese tradition, that when someone dies outside of the motherland, the all-glorious China, the body of the deceased must rest for a minimum of seven years in a land of adoption. Then, the bones can be cleaned and shipped back to China to be properly buried. Mrs. Wang's ancestors' remains had never been shipped back. So about two years ago, Mrs. Wong started the slow and tedious process of reclaiming the remains of the body until she finally received a letter of authorization three months ago. The authorities opened the grave and, surprise, it was empty, clean of all human remains, as if someone else got there first. The police opened a case and did what they often do best, found nothing. For their defense, it must be said that it was indeed a clean-cut job. No clues, no trace, as if nothing happened. This morning, Mrs. Wong, exhausted by the Polish inefficiency, hired me to find out what had really happened. And here I was, 11.45 p.m., in that winter 2012-2013, freezing my ass off in the glacial night in an attempt to solve the Chinese cemetery case. The cops had been right on that one. The scene of the crime was as clean as a baby's bottom after a warm bath. Nothing. Zilch. Not the slightest sign of a clue. Wait, wait a minute here. What's that? <clears throat> so Bozo, having an interesting night so far? Something is telling me, boys, that we are not going to get along too well, you and I. Ah, don't be that pessimistic. Why don't you go take a walk and forget everything you have heard about the Chinese cemetery? Not that I wouldn't like cracking your skull, but again, you could just take a walk, Gus. And why would you wear sunglasses in the middle of the god of night? Because... J'ai mal aux yeux, boy. I had to act very fast. No time to take my brass knuckles. First, knock out the hairy one. And then, if I have time, the big one. What the? I didn't have time. Sleep well, sweetie pie. Oh. Come on, get the fuck up and don't worry. He got his fair share of pain. Let me go hurt him now. Now. We gotta get the fuck out of here now. Holy shit. I think this asshole broke two of my teeth, son of a bitch. Remember, she said to only scare him. She don't like it when we don't listen. When I woke up, it felt like if my jaw had been hit by a cement truck in motion. I was pretty sure it was cracked, at best. The sun was rising up, and it had started raining. Another beautiful morning in a glorious city. And to top it off, my cigarettes were soaked, unsmokable. Lovely. So, what did we have here? A missing ancient Chinese body, a Chinese employer, a creepy cemetery, 
a possible minuscule and incomprehensible clue. Two thugs who beat the shit out of me for no reason and no cigarettes. I decided to head for the office. Maybe Diane will be already there with some coffee. Back at the office. Diane had been working for me part-time for about two years now. She was officially my secretary and unofficially the best barista I've found so far. Home sweet home. Diane, are you there? Have you made some coffee by chance? Yes, it's fresh and hot, just like you like it. Also, what happened to you? You look like shit. I'm just saying, you know. Oh, and by the way, sweetheart, there was a message for you on the office landline voicemail. I'm not saying, but I think you should listen to it. Like, right now, pretty much. Trust me, it sounds important. Sounds like you're right. Once again, the writer's perfectness strikes in the middle. I'm just saying, no harm done yet. Better call that Miss Lee immediately. It's ringing. Here we go. Hello? Who's talking? Mr. S. Fog? Is that you? Yeah, I'm assuming I'm speaking with Miss Lay. Yes, that's right. You are, Mr. S. Fogg. I need to see you as soon as possible. What can I do for you, Miss Lay? I cannot speak on the phone, but I beg you to believe me and to meet me. I absolutely need to see you this morning as... Where? Uh, uh, let's meet at the Starbucks on Government in Yates. Okay. See you there in 45 minutes. Let's become presentable again. And brand the toilet. Then, let's go get some answers, finally. Meanwhile, Diane, I am going to need you to do a few things for me. First and foremost, call Captain McLeod and find out what the cops have found so far about the cemetery case. Then, contact the cemetery, the city, the authorities, whomever the hell you want, but find out if anything unusual had happened recently in that bloody cemetery. And I do mean anything. Then, if you could go get me a pack of smokes, that would be grand. Okay, but let me fix your face a little before. And voila! It's better, isn't it, sweetheart? Mm. And anyway, why are you wearing your sunglasses inside? Because... J'ai mal aux yeux, sweetheart. 45 minutes and a ride in a Thunderbird later, I found myself downtown with the strange feeling that I was missing something of importance. 
something that had been in front of my eyes since the very beginning. It had stopped raining a little while ago when I was still at the office, but now it had started again. Typical Victorian weather. I took one last deep drag of my cigarette and went in. My date was easy to spot. Miss Lee, I presume. My name is S. Fogg. Oh, Mr. S. Fogg, thank you so much for coming. I really can't express how important this meeting is. Hmm. Allow me to ask you a question right from the start. What do you know about sea jewels, Mr. S. Fogg? Chinese sea jewels. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Are you referring to a sign or an image considered magical? A device held to have occult power? The term derived from the Latin sigillum, though it may also be related to the Hebrew segula, meaning word or action. Hmm, what else? Well, there is a very nice specimen of these on a Chinese tomb at the Chinese cemetery. Have you seen it? You can't smoke in here. Mm. Right. Mr. S. Fogg, you clearly are an insider. This is going to make us save some precious time. So I am simply going to say it as it is. We have used a sigil to make the body disappear as we needed it for a more important purpose. Nothing can be done about it. And, as we have absolutely nothing against you, we'd like to avoid you some disagreement. As you can imagine, we have extended arms and powers, I will say. And I must admit, our methods of persuasion can be more or less enjoyable, Mr. S. Fogg, as you have been able to experience firsthand as early as this morning. And I would like to add that I was against this idea and that it is the very reason why I am here now. Hmm. So, admitting that I believe your rocambolesque story and actually, regardless of it, if we want to keep on having a decent relationship, you and I, Miss Lay, let me explain to you to never tell me what I can and what I can't do. Segundo, as an old generation of French bastard, I need to maintain a certain reputation and the chances of letting go a lead in a case are less than slim. However, I hear you loud and clear, Miss Lee. Mr. S. Fogg, please, Tercio, say hi for me to your hairy thug. I'm sure he misses me. Bye now. I had come to get some answers, and now the case was as thick as a Scottish stew. I decided to call Diane to see if she'd find out anything. Hello? S. Fox Office? Diane speaking. Hi, sweetie. Any luck in your investigations? Oh, it's you. Well, here we go. First of all, I called my cloud, who was extremely challenging to contact. When I finally talked to him, he was quite rude, as usual, claimed that he had no time to dedicate to that case, 
and that there was not even a proof the body had ever been buried and that he was working on a massively important case that requires your immediate assistance. In fact, he asked you to drop the cemetery case and to call him as fast as possible. Of course, I told him I'll let you know. Second of all, I called every possible place I could come up with regarding some unexpected event at the cemetery, and I find nothing. Nothing except for a rather slim fact. The turf around the tomb was actually changed three weeks ago by a company called Nilbert LTD, owned by a gentleman named Oscar Nilbert. The company's office is located in the Rock Bay Avenue area. I have since been trying to find out if he has worked in any other cemetery in the Victoria area and I'm waiting for a call back from the Rose Bay Cemetery. Suddenly, a lightning bolt shone a first light on this rather obscure case. Holy shit! That's exactly what has been nagging me all that time! What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, I am going back to the cemetery. I've got to check something. Meanwhile, call me if you hear anything new. I needed to go back where it all started. There had always been something odd. I just missed it the entire time. And now, I needed to be sure. I jumped into the Thunderbird, turned the radio loud, and drove straight back to Crescent Road. I parked the car, and here I was, back to that spot, which was as creepy and empty during the day as it was at night. Most definitely, this place wasn't growing on me. And there it was, like a slap in the face. The clue was looking at me straight in the eyes. And it was smiling. The grass around the tomb was clearly different. An average folk could easily tell that it had been changed recently. How could I have possibly missed that earlier? Maybe because I came in the middle of the night and was wearing sunglasses. Hmm. I came closer. Something. A hunch I was having was telling me to... You gotta be shitting me! The phone rang. It was Diane. Hi, darling. It's me. I think you are going to be pleased with what I found. The Nilbert Company did three jobs at the Ross Bay Cemetery in the past six months. Hmm. I think it would be interesting to find out if there is any occupant in those specific tombs. Don't you think so? I already emailed you the precise location of the tombs as well as Neil Bird's address. Also, remember to call my cloud. Good work, Diane. Okay, I'm gonna call my cloud and head back to the office. I'll see you there. Oops, I'm leaving soon. I have to work for my other boss this afternoon. You know, sweetheart? Okay, well, Good day then. I went back to the car and drove back to the office. I needed to rest for a while. I could not remember the last time I slept. On my way there, I called my cloud. My cloud? It says fog. Cap, I need you to do me a favor. Great snake, says fog. What took you so long? 
Plus, I am the one who got to ask you a favor this time. Well, yes, Cap. But before, you're still going to have to do me a favor. And of course, that ain't negotiable. What? No! Now, you're gonna listen to me for once in your lifetime. Don't push the button too far. Whatever that means. Hey, Fog! Listen to me by Jove! Okay, okay, Cap. What's your story? Well, I'm in the middle of a majorly important investigation. Something uncanny, would I say, had happened at the Parliament building in the Legislative Assembly Chamber. Due to the specific location of the event, it has rapidly become an absolute priority, as I'm sure you can imagine. I have exhausted all my options but one, without any success. So you are my last option, Oswald, and I simply cannot fail. Therefore, I need you to come immediately to the Parliament so I can brief you correctly. This cannot be done over the phone. Hmm. I see. Well, there is a little problem, Cap. You see, I have actually made some definite progress in the cemetery case. And I am now at a crossroad. I am emailing you the location of three tombs at the Ross Bay Cemetery. I need you to send few of your guys to make sure the occupants are still occupying the graves. What? Look, I know you're pissed, but do me that favor and let me know of the outcome, and I'll come and help you with your present issue, I swear. This shouldn't take long. It can be solved in a matter of hours. You leave me with very little choice. So be it. I'll find out what's happening at the Ross Bay Cemetery. Then, we deal with my case. Excellent. I'll be waiting for your call. Bye, Cap. As fog, are you talking on the phone and drive? I went back to the office. It was still pouring rain outside. Like if the end of the world was near. I was okay with that concept. The large apartment was empty. Diane had left and it was me and my office. I knew what I needed. Sleep and rest as much as I could and pour myself some scotch. I went to my desk, opened the left lower drawer and grabbed a bottle of Artberg. I had gone to bed for a few seconds when the phone rang. Uh, hello? Is Fox speaking? What the fuck? Whoa, what the fuck are you? Relax, pal. I'm your thank you dragon. What? What are you doing here? You called me, Moran. Uh, I don't understand. Okay, shut up and listen. Soon, you are going to need me. I will come to you as a present. Pay a great deal of attention. This is utterly important. And stop fucking around and answer your bloody phone, pal. I had gone to bed for a few seconds when the phone rang. Uh, 
הלו, אס פוג ספיקינג? אס פוג? מה קלאוד היה? יו סיספישינס וויר וויר פאונדד. The three tombs were empty. By the great wall of China, as fog. Why do you always do that to me? I'm sorry, Cap. What's the plan now? Well, what's my choice? We need to clarify that cemetery story immediately. Your secretary, Diane, has sent me all the information she has about Libert. Why didn't you inform me about that earlier? Hmm, I ain't sure, Cap. Anyway, I have a small SWAT team ready. I thought we should pay a visit to Mr. Liebert. And I also thought that you would like to come with us. I'll see you at 9 p.m. at Liebert's office. Thank you, Cap. At 9 o'clock sharp, I met with MacLeod, just in front of Liebert's office. He was accompanied by two SWAT team members. The arrest had to be smooth and swift. The rain had finally stopped. Are you really going to light a cigarette right now? Yep. Paul, one of the SWAT members, with his fairy fingers, unlocked the resilient door in seconds. We entered the gloomy room in absolute silence. We passed the front room, what seemed to be used as an office, and found Liebert eating in the back of his room that was used as living arrangements. Marvin and Paul didn't give him the slightest chance of escaping. Liebert, as surprised as humanity was on the morning of 9-11, opposed no resistance to his arrest. Move and I'll send you to hell, asshole! Freeze, motherfucker! We found the rest of three skeletons in the basement. Some were missing an arm, others a leg. Of the fourth body, we never found a trace. Liebert had been collecting bodies in Victoria for about a year. He used his business as a cover and managed to escape suspicions until now. After acquiring a body, Liebert would clean it, then grind it until it was dust, cook it nicely with diverse vegetables and meat, and consume it on the spot. Liebert have had visions of a spirit dictating him to do so. As far as MacLeod was concerned, The case was closed. The mad cannibal had been found and arrested, and it was time to get back to a much more important investigation. Strangely enough, when he was escorted to the police van, Liebert started to yell profanities. That would be the last image I would have of him for a rather long time. So... We have a deal, right? Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. sharp, we'll meet in front of the Parliament building. Right. And you should really cut down the cigarette smoking, as fog. You're not that young anymore. Sure, Cap. I 
left the captain and drove directly to Norma's apartment. Norma's my lady friend. Norma always makes me feel alright. She keeps my spirit high. We fold into each other. She keeps my spirit high. Oh no! What happened to you, darling? You really look like shit. Just another day in paradise, love. Just another day. At about 3 a.m., we went for a walk along Dallas Road. The wind was cold, but it had stopped raining, and the moon was magnificent in the grandiose sky. As I usually did, I told the whole case to Norma. She was a good listener. Sometimes, it was all that was needed. But I am not sure I understand. The case is solved. You are going to get well paid. And you have me. What else could you possibly want? And why are you so thoughtful, sweetheart? You are absolutely right, darling. It's just that. It's just that I am not convinced. <laughs>